just so outstanding. 21 years as the head coach at, at South Carolina. And what she's been able to do during that time, 272 wins. And we will see what adjustments she makes as the Wildcats have the ball to start period number two. Alpha's daughter. And the Wildcats quick out of the locker room. Bosco. And I'm just kind of looking things over. And this looks like, is that going to be a corner? Yes. And as you've noticed, that's not us, but we get the official game clock. So this will be Gretchen Mills with the left-footed swinger. And now our referee, Elmas Mata, uh, Mamutovic, talking down there. The time is being kept on the field as the clock is not started. So you've got Rose, Rhodes and Richardson. And that ball didn't get to either of them, but the Wildcats keep it in as Grasso flicks it toward the goal. And Rhodes got her head on it. But Taylor Fox able to get it. Check that, Heather Hines, not Taylor Fox, my bad. And now South Carolina comes the other way. Barry back in there up top. And once again, Hahn who's tied for the team lead in scoring, will come off the bench in the second half. Contact on the far side, and I think they're going to get... Thought they might have gotten Maccabin Blessing for that, but they say that she was fouled. Here's a look back. Oh, yeah, you see yep. just, just a little chicken wing there from Karina Zulo. I think that was a good call, but South Carolina coming out from the break with a couple of changes, you see... Lauren Chang has moved over to that left mid position. They brought Lily Render in. We don't see Ryan Garris out there yet, who's one of their most dangerous attacking players. Okay, so it looks like now that the clock is in a position where it will start on the touch. We shall see. as Nielsen comes out to take the kick. And clock is now, in fact, operational. There's Barry. Boy, and that is just good defense there by Maccabin Blessing, but I really like the idea. She just touched that, tried to get it out to a teammate. And the Wildcats still don't have it clear. As Griffiths was able to track it down. And this is what I said earlier. You can see Barry the clear target. Boy, that ball loose in the box. It's still loose. That is unbelievably dangerous right there. Somebody has got to go and get a body on that ball. But the Wildcats catch a break there as Carolina just couldn't get it to settle. Richardson kept the pressure on. Here's a look, the ball bouncing. Wow, and that was Lauren Chang that got a foot on it. And now back to live action and the Wildcats keeping the pressure up. Mills kicked that one away. You see Zulo. Defended well over there by Maccabin Blessing. And now Kentucky trying to come the other way. Little punch out there to Ulfus' daughter. She's running. 
with Taylor Jacobson able to turn and just couldn't get it to turn quite enough. But a nice run by the Cats and a nice idea by Alpha Alpha's daughter. Here's a look, she fakes and goes on her right foot. I think she was trying to get a cross off, couldn't get her body around it enough and it goes just wide. But a great attack by the Wildcats. Little takeaway up top, but a nice job of staying with it by Samantha Chang. Here's the throw in again. Barry posting up on Rimco. This time the Wildcats bracket her. They had Rimco in the back. Maccabin Blessing dropping off in front of her. Ball still loose in the box. That was Olison who booted it away. When the Wildcats have been extremely fortunate here in the first six minutes because that ball has just been perilously bouncing around in front of the keeper, Laura Nielsen. Rhodes turns and is able to get it out for a moment. And now she wins it back in the air and she is fouled. Chang trying to battle, came up underneath her. Here's a look back at the foul. Rhodes trying to go up for the header and Chang just gets underneath her. Also battling Barry. Alpha's daughter. Once again, it's Chang with a foul. And now she protests to the referee, Elvis Mahmudovic. Great ball by Grasso. Richardson was there. Good defense by South Carolina. Maccabin Blessing keeps it in for a minute, but not where anybody could handle it. Chang battles Grasso, and this time they get Grasso. Elvis Mamudovic issues a warning to Grasso. Things becoming a bit more spirited as they remain tied here early in the second half. 
Dave Baker, Peyton Atkins, our entire SEC Network Plus crew. Delighted you've joined us for what's a good one between Kentucky and South Carolina. Kentucky getting a lot of numbers back. There's a shot, and it was a good one, but Samantha Chang couldn't get on top of it. Here's a look at Chang. Gets a little too far under it, but a shot from distance. Here's Grasso, she has room. Tries to go big. Oh, that's a nice ball to the center. Render tried to play it wide. Macabin, Blessing, and Zulo really battling on the far side in these early minutes of the second half. And so here comes the throw in, Dixon. And that'll be a corner. For the Gamecocks. Quarter for South Carolina. Second by number four, Lord Chang. So Lauren Chang with the left foot will take the kick. We saw how dangerous South Carolina can be off of these corners. That went right to the top. I believe Nielsen was able to get a punch on it. It looked like she went up and over Jalissa Harris, who scored the Carolina goal on a set piece that was very similar to that one. You see they're looking for Harris. She's that target. And Nielsen got a punch and it goes out to Griffiths. She hits it over the bar. Rhodes was right there with her. Again, they're trying to set it up and Ulfa's daughter, they're trying to go at kind of whoever Ulfa's daughter is checking. You see the cross from Zulo. And handled by Nielsen. And the Wildcats quickly come the other way. There you take a look at the goal leaders for each team, Jordan Rhodes. With that PK now takes the Kentucky lead, but she was tied with Richardson. And then you see Zulo and Hahn tied at four for South Carolina. As the Gamecocks were just called for offside. Which is their first of the match. Kentucky has only been called for one offside. Wildcats just trying to draw the South Carolina defense to them. Nice run here by Bosco. Got some help. And maybe one touch too many. You just saw the South Carolina defense just collapse. They had four players around Bosco. Here's the step in by Elfa's daughter. Works to the inside. She loves that move. Trying to cross. And that'll be a corner. Here we go, 
guys. Here's a look at Ulfa's daughter driving, gets the ball on her right foot. Tries to take the shot, and there's a deflection for a Wildcat corner. And this will be Gretchen Mills who will take it with the left foot, swinging toward the goal mouth. The wind blowing that way as well. Boy, that was right to the back post, and I think it hit the crossbar. Crosso let one go, and what a blast. And it was Heather Hines who had to lay out and make the leaping save. And you see Hines trying to exhort her team. It was a great shot by Grosso. She forced Hines to make that save over the crossbar. It's going to be another corner. So from the far side over there, that'll be Maccabin Blessing who will take it. Swinging it in toward the goal mouth. Here comes Rhodes, there's Richardson. And that one goes into the side of the net. And wow. Here's a look back, the corner kick off the post. Rhodes knocks it back to Grosso and she hits it first time with her right foot. It was going for that upper 90. Hines makes a great save, but I love the choice to shoot that first time from Grosso. And Shelly Smith really trying to shake her lineup up as she brings in four players. Luciano Zulo checks back in, as does 19 Evelyn Hahn, 22 Ryan Garris, and 49 Sarah Eskew all check into the Carolina lineup as we're just past the 61st minute. Boy, that's a handball there, isn't it? Looked like it. Everybody kind of froze up right there. The linesman across the way looked like he was going to put the flag up, but then didn't. Looked pretty clear from up here. It looks like South Carolina has moved Garris to the right-hand side. She normally finds herself on the left. Remco. Tried to put it in the attack end and just happened to kick it right at the same time as Grosso was coming to help. Here's Garris. And that'll be a corner. And so that'll be 26, Claire Griffiths, who will take the corner. You see those are all even right now. And this will be South Carolina's fifth. And remember, one of their goals came on the corner. They try to go to the back post. Don't quite get it there. But they keep it in. Rhodes got her head on it. But the Wildcats can't clear. Eskew. And it's headed out of there nicely. And then Alpha's daughter not able to do anything with it. This time she steps in. And Rhodes trying to take it the other way. Bosco punches it ahead. Jones won it in the air, but the Wildcats get it back. And here comes Richardson. They've done a pretty good job of keeping the ball away from her today. Trying to turn and get it on her right foot, and she does. And well played back there by Heather Hines. Only goal she's given up today has been on the PK. 
And we've seen this game be pretty stretched today. The defenders on both teams have had some room to drive. And a whistle. And did we have our first card issued? Looks like on number five, Lily Huber. Somebody's going in a book. There you go. It did, in fact, go on Huber, number five. Just kind of grabbed around the waist. And that's our first yellow, and that'll give the Gamecocks a chance at a set piece. Wow, somebody got that in the air. I'm telling you now, if you're Kentucky and that ball's in the air coming in the box, you better go out and get it because somebody's going to get their head on it. Miranda Jimenez coming back in right now for Kentucky. Here's a look back at the set piece. Good ball to the far post. It looks like Rhodes flicks it out, but it's going to be a corner for South Carolina, and this is how they scored their first goal. And a new face for South Carolina, 16 Abby Hugo, a 5'5 junior defender from Cary, North Carolina, checks in. And it seems like for about the last five minutes, we've done nothing but see South Carolina corner kicks down in the Kentucky end. Eskew with the left foot. It's another example. Just can't get it out. Now they've got some room in Grasso. Just boots it to relieve the pressure. This is Luciano Zulo, Zulo rather, excuse me. And there's Hugo who just checked in. See Harris with some more room to deliver. And I think she wanted to punch it in like that, but Carolina couldn't figure out what to do in front of her. Nice back and forth between Grasso and Ulfa's daughter. And now Huber switches the field. Mills gets it back and is able to make a turn with that left foot. And good defense there by Harris. Kept Jimenez from heading toward the goal mouth. Good pressure by Jimenez. South Carolina able to escape. It's a nice step in by Maccabin Blessing. I tell you, we've seen a lot of people play today, but I really think it's gonna come down to, to fatigue, and that's gonna sound really weird, but I mean like, mental fatigue. I mean, this game has just been so taxing. And it seems like we're in just a little bit of a lull right now. So this is the 20th player to come on for South Carolina. This is 15, Ryan Coleman, a 5'5 junior from Charleston, South Carolina. She replaces Claire Griffiths. And Kentucky has gone with their normal rotation. Only three substitutions, Jimenez, Nicholson, and Maria Olson. Nice play by the Gamecocks there. 
That was Hahn. Good and they got, it, they got it to ask you, but it was punched away by the Wildcats. This time they call the handball. Much to the chagrin of the South Carolina bench. Can Rhodes get there? She cannot. And we haven't seen too much play with the Kentucky front line so far this game. I mean, we caught, we saw a couple early opportunities, and obviously Rhodes had that PK, but a lot of the game has been played in this midfield third and mm -hmm. the Kentucky back line as well. Maccabin Blessing is going to get called for that foul. Boy, and that is just outside the box. Here's a look back. Maccabin Blessing just with the arm around Han. But this is going to be a dangerous area for South Carolina. It's it almost like is. a short corner, which they've had some success. And interesting, Jalissa Harris back there with Garris. Now, I was going to say, Harris is the one who scored the goal on the header. So Garris is now going to take the kick with a left foot, it looks like. Harris is on that back post. So's Hahn. They keep it on the ground. And Bosco clears. And the Cats live to fight another day. Here comes Hannah Richardson back in. She's going to replace Jimenez. As we're just past the 70th minute. Two first half goals coming just about two and a half minutes apart. A hitter by Julissa Harris for South Carolina. And then a PK by Jordan Rhodes. And we remain all even at 1 1. energy being so important and you hear Ian Carey down there trying to encourage his squad and a lot of fouls lately on both sides over on that far side of the field it's going to be another free kick for the Wildcats seven fouls against the Gamecocks nine against the Wildcats Luciana Zulo. Fortunately for Kentucky, she crosses that right to Olison. And here's Richardson. She's got room. Tries to cross over, and there it is! And a diving stop! Rhodes tried not to do too much with it, and that is a huge stop by Heather Hines, who's fired up and well should be. Here's a look back. Richardson, a very unselfish play, knocks it over to Rhodes, tries to first time and hits it right off. Looks like the stomach of Hines, but a great save. Hines read it perfectly and was there. And I'm telling you, I. I like what Richardson did. I loved what she did. I loved what Rhodes did. You know, try not to do too much with it. And here's Maccabin Blessing with a corner. Top of the box, and Rhodes got a head on it and flicked it across the end line. Here's a look back at the corner by Maccabin Blessing. Rhodes gets herself free and tries to redirect the header, and it just goes wide. 
for Remy Swartz. 23, Samantha Chang. 24, Lauren Chang. All checked back in for South Carolina. As Shelly Smith continues to go to fresh legs. As we come up on the 74th minute. Swartz was the defender who got called for the foul in the box that led to the Rhodes PK. They try to go up top again to Richardson. And Harris took it away. Boy, that ball gets through, and that is not good. Maccabin Blessing on the far side as she battles with Coleman. Good block by Jordan Rhodes. You see her all the way back, helping the Kentucky defense. She has covered so much ground today, and now Grasso, can she create? Yes, she can. Got herself by Hugo, and she's still got some room to run. Alpha's daughter trying to turn it. Got past one defender, and now trying to put it on her left foot. That's an outstanding job down there in a the corner by Eskew and 23, Samantha Chang on the defense. Just a really well played match so far. Each team with nine shots. South Carolina with four on goal, Kentucky three. And the huge save moments ago by Heather Hines to keep this a 1-1 game. Once again, Rhodes with that high pressure. Great step by Olsen. Grasso couldn't get there. That's Hahn. She's got the ability to strike. Instead, she goes wide to Garris. An excellent defense by the Wildcats. I believe that was Rimco. Uh. So more substitutions for the Gamecocks. 10, Catherine Berry, that big target, checks back in, along with 20, Karina Zulo. Han comes out. And Abby Hugo comes out. And immediately, they go to Berry, who turns in front. Wow! Sulo came in and fanned, but then the ball got back out to the top of the box, and I didn't see who that was. I believe it was number four. Would that have been Swartz? If it was Swartz, what a redemption that would be for her. There you see Barry. Gets free to the top of the box. Yeah, number four. Wow. Remy Swartz. I remember Swartz was called for the foul on the Rhodes PK. And so at the 77th minute, and credit South Carolina for that pressure, but there just had to be some sort of defensive breakdown for that ball to roll all the way through the box like that. Yeah, I think Barry finding herself free off that throw in. And, and, Peyton, let, like I said, Shelly Smith's been doing it for 21 years. Right. And, 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 I mean, she's not afraid to make moves. She's kept getting fresh people in there. And that goal came just seconds 
after she substituted Barry back in there to be that big target on those throws and on those kicks. And she was able to hold off the defense, turn. See, Rhodes able to pick it off, finds Richardson. She likes to go inside, but what a play that was. Calmly and well executed by Sutton Jones. This is where we saw the Wildcats have that Shot from Grosso. So Gretchen Mills from the corner. Grosso winds up and it goes wide. Here's a look back, the kick by Mills. Ball gets loose to the top of the box and it's Grasso again, tries to keep it on the ground and it just goes wide. And so now the demeanors of these two teams, I believe rapidly change. Both teams were going all out. And you gotta believe now that Kentucky obviously continues to go all out, but South Carolina will look to back it down and use clock. As they now have a 2-1 lead as we come up on the 80th minute. And Richardson is gonna be called for being offside. As the Wildcats now press even more First offside of the match for the Cats. Grosso can't do anything but boot it out of bounds. Less than 10 minutes to go. The Wildcats looking for a couple more opportunities. But here's Barry. Wow. And she is just such a big target. She commands everyone's presence. And so you have to try to help. Substitution for the Cats, first time today. We've seen Anna Young, three. She comes in to give Mills a break. And Mills, once again, has just played outstanding. And time now becoming the ally of the Gamecocks and the adversary of the Wildcats. Wildcats looking to go a little more direct. Olison got it up to Richardson, and now she looks to get it back, boy. And I'm telling you, Harris stepped in just seconds before Richardson got there.
Here's where you'll see game management from the Gamecocks. They're in no hurry here. Going to try and keep this ball over in the corner. Absolutely. And waste some time. Ball out of bounds and substitutions. Ulfa Ulfa's daughter checks back in for Kentucky. She replaces Nicholson. And Cameron Dixon back in to the South Carolina lineup, and she replaces Remy Swartz. That's going to be a foul against the Wildcats. As Barry goes down. And the clock's still running. Yes, it is. And again, and they shouldn't be. South Carolina in no particular hurry. This time they go short to Barry. Here's where you'll see she'll just hold it in the corner for as sure. long as she can. Miranda Menez comes back in for the Wildcats. She is going to replace Bosco. And seven, Peyton Patrick, the freshman from Parkton, Maryland, checks in. And she's going to replace... Karina Zulo. So I, I'm going to tell you, you know, if you want to, if you want to use another game analogy, Shelly Smith, who we've talked about just the success she's had over the years, she has played about every card in the deck. And there's a collision. The referee is asking for the trainer to come out, but I mean. Marie Olison already back up. And she says she's fine. But the trainer will still check her out. Looks like the ball's off her stomach there. She might have just gotten the wind knocked out of her. Yeah, it wasn't from the contact there. I mean, it was a nice job trying to avoid the contact by Patrick. But it was just from taking that kick right in the midsection. And so she'll come off. And now she's been waved back on after the ball was put in play. As there's only five minutes left in this one. And Kentucky trying to push their numbers here in this last five minutes. They took Marissa Bosco out, putting Miranda Jimenez in there to give them another forward. And so for the Gamecocks, Luciano Zulo checks back in. Ryan Coleman comes out. Mills comes back in for the Cats. As they have the clock stopped, they were just trying to give her a break. And Anna Young comes out. Once again, there's Barry, and that's going to be offside as Patrick couldn't hold up. 
And now the Wildcats need to move and move in a hurry. And if you're South Carolina, what you want to do is you want to keep possession and you want to keep it in the Kentucky end. And they go to Barry again in the corner. She's going to do everything she can to hold off Maccabin Blessing. Mills is over there to help now. And she would just like to put it on her feet and just hold it. Run that clock. Now into the 86th minute. Coming up on three minutes to go. Kentucky looking for one more opportunity. Menez. And certainly South Carolina has gotten more defensive since that goal to put them on top. But they are very, very good in terms of just possessing and not getting beaten over the top. And the Wildcats got to go in a hurry. And I don't know why they're not going in a hurry. The clock continues to run. And that's an awful lot of time that they've used. Olison tries to go up top. Grosso keeps it in. Ulfa Stutter trying to free herself. And Grosso tries to turn. And Hines comes out again and just stops it ahead of a streaking Jordan Rhodes. And we're coming up on a minute 30 to go. Hines going to go big. I certainly would. If you're South Carolina, you just want to boot it down to the other end like that. And that's going to be a foul against the Gamecocks. The kind of thing that Shelly Smith did not want her club to do as we enter into the final minute. Tucky with everyone in the box. And that ball just bouncing around, bouncing around. Gamecocks come the other way. Now coming up on the final 30 seconds. Trying desperately to make something happen. And Eskew boots it to the sidelines. Final 10 seconds. Can the Wildcats get off a chance? That ball is booted into the back end, and that should do it. Big effort by the Wildcats, but my goodness, what a total game by the Gamecocks of South Carolina.